So uh, welcome everyone. It is uh, wonderful to see you all. Thank you for making time to be here. Uh, uh, I, I think you're going to be very excited by what we have to share today. Um, uh, Julius has uh, come up with some new innovative tools that will help you with ELA. Uh, we know what a big important, uh, how important it is to for the students write well and how difficult it can be with the grading. And so um, I, I can't wait for you to see what Julius has come up with. And uh, you may know that we presented last week and um, there's a lot of uh, exciting uh, tools that Julius has incorporated from last week's feedback. So um, we're gonna have another one of these next month. Uh, we'll be focusing on um, early literacy. Uh, so stay tuned for more information about that. Uh, but without further ado, it is my uh, great honor to uh, introduce Julius. Take it away. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming here today. I know it's the middle of parent conferences for many of you. So thank you for extending an already long day with us. Um, we'll go ahead and talk about ELA writing now. So I just wanted to start with the standards. So at the kinder level, the expectation is that students aren't writing like multiple paragraphs or anything, but they're doing some quote unquote combination of drawing, dictating and writing to express an opinion, to relay back some information or to tell a story, some sort of narrative. Essentially they're coming up with a title and some sort of sentence, not a full paragraph, but a title and a sentence. So let me illustrate using skies what that might look like. So many teachers do this thing called visual text. So on skies, you can do visual text just by looking for a picture or by dragging in something that maybe LAUSD has provided for you. Here, I'm just gonna search for a picture called goldfish jumping into a bowl, into a bowl just to illustrate how easy it is to get a student to reply. Oh, look at this. This one, this one is a not subtle message about money and hooks and goldfish bowls. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just write a prompt, like tell me what is happening here. And just because, you know, not all kinder students are reading, I'm gonna go ahead and record some audio as well. Tell me what is happening here. So that by itself is a visual text prompt. And already this is nice because any student with a device can see the prompt up close. They don't have to be squinting at the screen and they can be um, playing back the recording so that they can hear it for themselves. And let me go ahead and unplug my headphones so I can play it back here. Tell me what is happening here. And you guys should be able to hear it. Everyone hear that? Okay. But of course the idea for a kindergarten and let me go ahead and move this to where kinder is, is that they should be able to do some combination of drawing, dictating, and writing. So all I do is press the teacher control panel. And I know this is a review for about three quarters of you, but our survey did indicate that a quarter of you are just starting off skies. And so I'm gonna hit the microphone here to allow the students to record their voice back to me. I'll go ahead and activate the student view by pressing all cards and selecting some student. Hmm, actually, give me just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and log in as a student. Just so I'll have a student account to log in. Um, and are we ready to take on that fight, like as a union, right? Like, are we ready? I'll just mute um, everyone, sorry about that. Um, potentially. Um... And then I'll ask Julius to unmute himself. There we go. Thank you. And just uh, feel free to use the reactions or questions or chat if you have a question or comment. Okay, thank you. So I was just about to illustrate um, using student mode to do some, uh, oh, of course I just logged in as a, a student, so I'm not logged in as myself anymore. Give me just a minute. To do some dictation response. Okay, let's go back here. Oh, now I can log in as any, any one of you guys. So let's say I log in as uh, Jasmine. And me, pretending I'm Jasmine, I'm gonna go ahead and say what's happening here. I can choose either text, either writing it or speaking it. I'm gonna choose speaking it. And I'm gonna say, the goldfish enticed by a larger bowl and money hops over to the larger bowl, period. 
And so, of course, I could play it back. The goldfish, enticed by a larger bowl and money, hops over to the larger bowl, period. Um, but of course, the standards didn't just mention speaking. The standards also mentioned dictation. And so I don't know if you guys all know this, but in the recording panel, there is the option to take dictation. So let's try that again. A goldfish hops from one bowl to another bowl. OK, well, it's not perfect. Let's try it one more time. A goldfish jumps from one bowl to another bowl. There. And then, you know, you might have to change some things as a student, a bowl. But this is basically how, given a visual text prompt, students can enter in their responses and also do some basic dictation. Um, students could also attach things like drawings if they wanted to, uh, but I'll leave that. I'll go ahead to the next to the next item. Okay, so that's very basic, like kinder level sort of writing activity. Now, when they go to a higher grade level, by first grade, there's already an expectation that they're going to be able to write simple, very simple paragraphs. And so let me give you an example of how that might look. Now, even at the early stages, there's this idea of a writing process that we want to be able to guide students through. Uh, Calkins popularized this through her idea of a writing workshop. And so I'm just going to go ahead and look for a visual of this. Calkins writing workshop. Because she has different stages. Oops. Let's try that one more time. Calkins writing process, not workshop. Here we go. This is a good illustration of the Calkins writing process. And so this is just the idea that writing isn't just, you know, you open up a, a window or you write on a piece of paper and then you write and then that's it, you know, they're done. Uh, it's that it goes through stages. You want to write a pre-write, you want to write a draft, you revise it, you edit it, and you go through all these stages and your work gets better and better as you revise uh, your work. So I'm going to illustrate how we can apply this sort of multi-stage writing process uh, to students in skies. So the first thing I need is a prompt. So the prompt is just going to be cat, cats versus dogs. Here we go. Oh, look at that. How cute. And the prompt will be, which animal makes a better pet? A cat or a dog? Let me go ahead and plug my headphones in so you guys don't hear so much noise from outside. And I'm going to go ahead and put up some cards. Pre-write. Draft. Revise. And then edit. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to put a pre-writing for now because I'm going to do something that's going to make this easier. So we have pre-writing. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little section for students to write. So let's say I, as a student, want to start pre-writing on this topic. Again, I'm going to go ahead and make myself Jasmine. And I'm going to type in some thoughts about cats versus dogs. Well, of course, dogs are better. Like That goes without saying. They're loyal. Dogs are loyal. Dogs can rescue you if you get hurt, right? Like cats wouldn't do that. They would just like, where's my cat food? And finally, most importantly, dogs won't eat you if you pass away. They just won't, you know. I mean, cats totally would. So that's our, that's my pre-writing. And now through the, you know, writing process, 
I want to turn this into a paragraph. So probably the best way to do this as a teacher is just to make a copy of the stack of student work because you've already graded it. You've already made feedback. You want to see how your students progress through the stages. You can just take it, select, select. Now you've got all the cards here selected and you can do what you couldn't do with paper. Just press copy, press the plus and press paste. And now we're going to have a stack of student work ready to go to the next stage, which is going to be draft. And we'll do this a couple more times. So I'll, I'll just go through stage, 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 stage. And so as a student, I can go, okay, let me make myself a student again. Sorry, I don't mean to give people motion sickness with going back and forth. Uh, the draft. I can take my outline and turn it into a draft. So, hmm, these are fragments. These aren't complete sentences. So now I need to write complete sentences. Let's see, dogs are better pets than cats. They are loyal, period. They can rescue you if you get hurt. They won't, so I'm just adding pronouns now. They won't eat you if you pass away. Oh, and then we need the conclusion too like a call to action maybe, adopt a dog today, right? Okay, this is my draft. And I'm gonna go ahead and make it a paragraph by you know actually putting the lines all together. Great, so this is my awesome draft paragraph. But we're not done because this is a multi-stage process. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing I did before. Select, select, copy, paste. So again, as a teacher, you're doing this for all the work in your class, the work everyone has submitted. You're just giving them another opportunity to work on it and revise it. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a revision. I'm gonna call this revise. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to being Jasmine. And now I'm gonna write a revision. I'm only gonna do this. This is the last revision I'm gonna make. So dogs are better pets than cats. Well, I think the prompt said make. Dogs make better pets than cats. They are loyal. What does loyal mean? Let's, let's be specific about what loyal means. They are loyal and will be by your side if you ever feel sad or lonely. That's loyal. That's a loyal thing. If you get hurt, we'll get some sentence variety. If you get hurt, they not just can, they will rescue you. Yeah, there we go. This is a stronger sentence. And let's, and if you get really hurt and die, they won't eat you. That's great. And then the last, the last sentence is pretty good. Adopt the dog today. So there we go. Now we have a revised paragraph. And again, this is something that would take students over, you know, multiple class periods, multiple sessions to achieve. And at each stage, you're giving feedback, you're making revisions. Um, you could even now open up this up to collaboration to let other students make comments on each other's work. And then students could take that feedback into account. So it's really a writing workshop, inclusive of everyone. Um, I'm going to go ahead and copy this one more time. And maybe the feedback that this particular student got was, hey, meets a picture of a dog. Right? And maybe this person is glad to oblige. Jasmine's glad to oblige. She comes in, again, switching back to student view. And she just edits her card. And all she does is type in image search and then looks for a picture of a dog. Oh my gosh. How could you not prefer that over cats? Just looking at that dog. Like, come on. Come on, look at that dog. And now we have a perfect essay paragraph ready for printing, posting on the bulletin board, you know, displaying to parents. It's great. So this is the writing process. Okay. So if you had talked to us last year, this would be the state of the art. Like we would have said, okay, we're stopping here. This is pretty much all there is to teaching writing. Just give students the freedom to write about something fun and exciting to them. 
let them loose and give them plenty of revisions and they will become good writers. And Sky says all the multimedia and all the steps and all the processes and stuff built in to support like that writing process. But here's the thing. When working with many of you and embedding the class and seeing student work samples and things like that, we realized that there's a little bit more that can be done to make students good writers and strong writers. And so the rest of today's presentation is going to be talking about these extra steps we can go to to make students writing not just adequate or okay, but really fantastic. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward past first grade to second grade, fourth grade, middle school, and high school. And I want to point out that it ramps up pretty quickly. By first grade, they're already writing simple paragraphs. By second to third grade, they got to write compound sentences, okay? They got to have the and, but, so, because, while, after, before. All those transition linking words need to be part of their sentences and part of their paragraphs. By fourth and fifth grade, it's not just anecdotes from you know their head. They got to really be able to draw from a variety of sources. They got to be able to quote things, quote citations. They got to have concrete details, domain specific language. By middle school, it's got to be really solid. Uh, arguments need to have a claim. You need to have a lot of supporting evidence. You have to have reasoning, you know, linking the evidence to the claim. Informational essays need to be really organized. There have to be good transitions. Narrative needs to switch between points of view and have good dialogue and good details. High school, the arguments need to be even more sophisticated with not just claims, but counterclaims. You got to be able to argue both sides of the, the argument and then be able to, you know, say why that's a bad counter argument. Um, you got to be really organized. You have to have really strong transitions, multiple points of view, multiple resolutions. So writing is like a lifelong, you know, process that's supposed to get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And here's an example midway through at the fifth grade of what students are expected to be able to write according to the smarter balanced sort of, you know, testing committee. Um, here's a sample writing prompt about service animals and whether or not, you know, non dogs can be good service animals. And of course, there's a variety of sources about monkey helpers and animals helping people and ADA guidelines. And these are, you know, pretty substantive readings. And students are expected to be able to come up with, you know, a multi paragraph essay talking about why they're great, what they can do, but a lot has been passed. Is this good? While they're loving and loyal, they also happen to be on the large side, they might be too big. So this is pretty sophisticated. The fifth grader is like arguing different sides and then trying to piece together the evidence from all the different sources. This is sort of the expectation. Dogs do have their upside. My opinion is this. Here's the problem. While this is the expectation, this is not the reality of where a lot of students are at, at their grade level, certainly not at the fifth grade level. Instead, and this is directly from a New York Times article. This is real student work samples from standardized tests. These are the sort of sentences we more commonly see our students writing. At the elementary school level, you might see a sentence like plants need water, it needs sun too. Not T-O-O, T-O, no period. And when students write these sort of sentences at the elementary school level, well, here's the awful thing they don't really get much better. They don't improve, they don't progress. Like the whole writing bandwagon has sort of passed them by. Their sentences remain quite weak. And by the high school level, they're writing things like this. Well, machines are good, but they take people jobs. Like if they don't know how to use it, they get fired. There's reasoning in there. There's a good thought in there, but the mechanics of having put that sentence together into something comprehensible to an outside person it's just not there. This isn't just, you know, students in Los Angeles or students in California. This is nationwide. 75% of students in the United States are considered below proficient in writing. Spans everything, all geography, all demographics. I guess everyone just texts and tweets and watch videos now. People don't read and write as much as they used to. It's hard to get experience in writing. And at the, root of, at, at the root of this sort of writing issue is maybe two really common misconceptions about writing and teaching writing. The first 
idea is that, well, writing should naturally come from talking. If you're just talking a lot, if you're able to express yourself in a spoken way, you just put the words down on paper, you just dictate, you just transcribe, and suddenly you're a good writer. The other common, common misconception is that it doesn't really matter what you write about. You can write about anything. You can write about the phone book. You can write about the shoes you're wearing. You can write about anything. All you need to do is write and you'll become a better writer. And I'm gonna pause for a second. These two things kind of make sense, right? This idea that writing is caught, not taught. This idea that they just need exposure and practice and they'll become better writers. But here's the reality. The reality is that to get better at writing, at least these days, it's not enough just to put paper in front of students. They need really explicit instruction. The second point is they can't just write about random stuff like, well, cats versus dogs or Nintendo versus PlayStation or iPhone versus Android or soccer versus football or whatever. They have to write about things bigger than themselves, bigger than their personal experience. Because when they get to middle school and high school, they're not going to be writing about themselves anymore, right? They're going to be writing about all the informational things they're reading. So Calkins, sort of the most well-known you know, writing expert, says several times they need explicit instruction and ample opportunity for practice. They need to be explicitly taught how to write. They need clear goals and frequent feedback. And so the rest of this presentation is this one topic. What does effective, explicit instruction in writing look like? Did you have effective, explicit instruction in writing? Rhetorically. I, I don't feel like I did. When I was in middle school, they just gave us paper and told us to write. I was never told, you know, here's how to use a, a linking verb correctly. I was never told how to put sentences together. It was just right. But if we had to go back and rewind ourselves, what would effective explicit instruction in writing look like from the start? Well, there's one person who figured out an approach and I'm gonna be introducing her to you today if you haven't already heard of her. Her name is Judith Hochman and she was a SPED teacher and she ran a SPED school focused on students with learning disabilities. And with her, there was no choice. If her students were going to write at all, they needed explicit instruction. So she came up with a very scaffolded way to teach writing. And then her students graduated, they would go to regular classes, part of the general you know, education, and they would outright everyone there. They would be better than all the regular kids. And so she started to talk to teachers who were not just fed, but also general education, teach them how to use these techniques. And it turned out these techniques are generally useful for all kids not just special ed. So she has sort of two basic principles. The first, Common Core tends to jump to paragraphs way too fast. Like by first, by first grade, it's like write paragraphs already. She's like, students don't know how to write good sentences yet. Every year, it, you, can be, you can be writing paragraphs, sure, you can certainly do that, but you need at least some time, a few weeks, really dedicated to getting the sentence structure down. No run-ons, no fragments, periods in the right place, words spelled correctly, capital letter in the beginning, subject verb agreement, all that stuff needs to be really solid before you can jump to paragraphs. And the second thing she advocates is that everything must be based on knowledge rich content. Sadly, that's a lot of subjects that get neglected at least at the elementary level, science, history, literature, a lot of details, a lot of facts. You need to draw from all that, something outside your world in order to make a good writer. So one big question is, is it worth it? You know, does her method work? Well, we did a few things. Uh, James and I, uh, we took her, we took Hochman's course. We paid some money for it. We did it like 10 virtual sessions, eight hours, did all the homework. Uh, we worked with a team from San Pasqua Elementary, a magnet school in Highland Park, to implement it with a bunch of classes. And we also tried using this method in our own summer program for second through fifth graders last summer. And here's what we found. The first is, it does work. <laughs> uh, we noticed that like, at each stage, we're correcting different mistakes. But then once the students learn how to write, you know, once they've got like the conjunctions down, they don't make the conjunction errors again. 
once they know how to do the kernel sentence, they don't make the kernel like it's accumulative. They build and build and build, and we see definite improvements at each stage. So this scaffolded approach does work. We got a parent testimonial. I know it's just one data point. It's an anecdote, um, but she claimed that her daughter went up like one grade level in six weeks, which is absurd. I know it can't it can't be a real grade level, but the mom was very impressed, and she's like, "I'm definitely sending them to your program next year." Um, but just the idea that someone, a student's writing could actually improve in six weeks. It's kind of crazy, right? We don't expect that, um, but it's possible. Okay, but here's the thing. Even though it worked, even though we saw improvement, it was hard as hell. It was hard to implement her method. And here's why, okay? One, we had to write all these activities from scratch integrated activities. You try writing all these question prompts on science and history and whatever, it takes a lot of time. The second was grading was a bear because you had to grade all these little snippets and you had to give feedback. That was all hard. So I was going to say, you know, we have this magical method for improving writing or Hochman has this magical method, but not practical for everyone to do until now. Okay, let's get to what we're going to do. We have 30 more minutes. So the first is new ELA generators. So a bunch of you guys had good suggestions last Tuesday. It has now been seven days. So of course, there's new features that have been made since then. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. I'm going to, she has sort of three sentence activities. I'm going to call level one, level two, and level three. Level one activities are the basics. Basically stop writing like you talk. No more run on sentences, no more fragments. If you have scrambled up syntax, it needs to be unscrambled. And subjects and verbs need to agree. If, you, if you're in the past tense, you stay in the past tense. No, no typos, no misspellings, period at the end, uppercase at the beginning. Just nice, clear, simple sentences. Level two is combining sentences using conjunctions, but, because, so, after, although, while. All the words you use to glue sentences together, you need to be really solid on how to use it. And level three is called adding details, expanding kernel sentences using conjunctions and the positives. I won't get into too much detail about that. That's more advanced. Um, let me give an example of maybe what's considered her most famous activity. I'm going to call it, it's called but because so. So I'm going to drag in a, uh, what you call it, a news ELA article. Oops. We're going to move it. And this is a fun article about, it's really cool actually, guys. It's like paper electronics. You can actually spray like circuits on the paper and then you can make like flexible cell phones and things like that. It's very exciting. Um, so one of her favorite activities, we're just gonna call it, um, what you call it? Complete the fragments, complete the following. Complete, please is to have the same kernel, but different, like, but because so. So we have something like paper can be used to make circuits, but paper can be used to make circuits. So, and paper can be used to make circuits. Because so, but because so. And the idea is that students come in and see a prompt like this after they've read, you know, after they finished reading the article and they fill it out with things like, oh, paper can be used to make circuits, but it takes a lot of work to figure out how to do this. And then paper can be used to make circuits because uh, wires can be sprayed onto it. 
paper can be used to make circuits so we can make flexible cell phones. So you see what's going on here. The first one has to be a contrast. The second one has to be a consequence. I'm sorry, the second one has to be a why, answering a why question. And the third one has to be, well, you can do this so, sort of a cause and effect. This is a subtle thing. Students don't always get the difference between these three conjunctions. But with these sort of activities, you can really tie grammar, reading, and writing all together into one activity. OK, enough talking about that. Let's, let's get on to some generators. So the good news is that we can now generate level one activities run on sentences, fragments, scrambled sentences, bad sentences from any nonfiction text. We can make prompts from them. And so let's illustrate how this might work. I do want to mention that a lot of like kinder teachers wrote to us last week about early literacy suggestions. I have not gotten around to that because that's for the next webinar. But if you have a suggestion about early literacy, please type your email address into the chat box now so I can follow up with you and ask you questions about early literacy, because I do want to implement some generators for early literacy for this webinar in three weeks. Okay, but I'm not doing early literacy generators right now. Okay. So the first reading is from Benchmark. This is one called The Open Road. And what we would love to do would be to take this reading and create some run on sentence activities from it. Now, you can use Chunker, you know, you can use Chunker to take the text from these activities. Like I can use Chunker to do this. I can use Chunker to do that. And so it's pretty easy for me to pull the text out of, out of this thing. If you guys don't know Chunker, we, we covered it last webinar. So just review the video for the last webinar and see, just like that, I pulled the text out of uh, the benchmark reading and now I can reuse it for my own purposes. I'll delete this because I already did this. Now here's the thing. One way to create a run on sentence from here would be to just to take some of the text and remove all the periods and make everything lowercase. So I could do that. Like I could say generator, run on sentences, do this. And I could say make cards. And it will do that. I mean, it will take this and then it will say like, oh, you know, I've got this run on sentence I need to correct by putting all the periods and things like that in the right place. But there's a problem with that. The problem with that is that students could just go back and like, you know, see the article and just put the periods where they need to go. No, we don't want to do that. What we want to do is have Skies actually read the article, understand the article, and rewrite and paraphrase it so that we have completely new sentences for students to work with. So let's look at how that will work. Again, I'm just going to copy the text from the article. So here's all the text from Benchmark. I'm going to click plus. Now I'm doing it slowly. Plus, make quiz card, and then generator. I'm going to click run on sentences. I'm just going to paste the text in here. And you'll notice we have an option here that says summarize and paraphrase source text. I click it. It's actually reading it, so it's going to take like more than a few seconds. And now we see that it's actually created new sentences that students can now break up as a run on sentence. So if I go in as Jasmine again, the first automobiles appeared in the 1980s, period. They were called horseless carriages because they were powered by an electric motor, period. In 1980, Henry Ford introduced, and you've got to you know, do the correct punctuation and things like that too. But see what's happening. We have a system now where it can read any sort of content and automatically create new sentences for your students to do these sort of activities. Okay, let's do another one. This is an article from CNN.com. Um, a concerning variant is about to become dominant in the US and Americans could help fuel or curb a surge. 
So yeah, apparently COVID's still here. There's a new variant coming out. The vaccine won't fix everything. And they're doing ridiculous things like reopening restaurants and schools. Um, so let's say we want to make fragments from this whole article. Can you imagine what a pain it would be to do it by hand? Like you'd have to go through all these sentences and take the predicate or take the subject and make all these questions. Why not just use a generator? Just copy the text, make quiz card, generator. And now I just want to click fragments. I'm going to paste the text in. I just want fragments and I click make cards and it's going to make some fragments for me that were derived from the article that I just pasted in. See? Is projected to become the dominant variant in the US. You know, B117, whatever. Blah, blah is highly contagious. It could cause a surge in cases, experts have said. Um, this new strain generally offer good protection against the variant, the vaccine. So see, students can be completing these fragments now that were taken from this huge long article. And of course, you know, the key is down here so you can grade it. You can grade all the student responses. Okay, I'm gonna show two more generators. Then I'm gonna ask for questions and then we're gonna continue. What about sentence scrambling? Here we have an article we've taken from News ELA. There's so many good articles on News ELA. This one's just the one on paper, paper computers. I'm just gonna copy the paragraph here that has to do with, you know, how you make the paper keyboards. Again, plus generator and scrambled sentences. Again, paste it in, press make cards, and suddenly, well, not suddenly, it actually has to read, understand it, rewrite and do all this business, but still faster than doing it by hand. And now we've got sentence unscrambling activities. Stencil team the a circuit onto the back of paper. The team stenciled a circuit onto the back of paper. They then sprayed several on layers of materials. They then sprayed on several layers of materials. Particles two to nickel layers contain carry electricity through the circuit. Two nickel layer, two nickel particle layers carry electricity through the circuit. You have to unscramble it. The system actually recognizes grammar and parts of speech. It knows where all the nouns and verbs and prepositions are. So no matter how long the sentence is, it won't go too crazy. They'll scramble it just enough so that it's hard, but not enough so that it's impossible to do. It knows to keep the right parts of speech where they should be. Okay. I'm just geeking out over the parts of speech thing. That was, that was kind of fun to figure out. Okay, the last source I want to point out is core knowledge. Again, you know, Skies has engaged New York built into it. It also has this entire, you know, elementary curriculum called core knowledge with a ton of readings and a ton of nonfiction. So, you know, here we, we got something from astronomy, stars and constellations. I just pulled out one card. And this is about constellations. Okay. And this one, I'm going to make some bad sentences. So I'm going to go to here, plus generator. And I'm going to say bad sentences. And I'm just going to paste this entire thing in. But you know what I want to show now? Subject verb agreement. Let's get rid of the typos. I don't care about typos. I just want bad verbs. So I'm going to click make cards. And now the students have to go in and correct the verb tenses because I've scrambled them all up or Skies has scrambled them all up. So again, you don't have to think. You just like copy and paste text and it makes questions for you. So here we go. Ancient civilization see constellations as figures of people, animals, and objects. Constellations often telling familiar stories about heroes like the Greek hunter Orion. The very brightest star is in the constellation Canis Major. Oh my gosh, right? We have to correct this by saying ancient civilizations saw constellations as figures of people, animals, objects. 
constellations often told familiar mythological stories. The very brightest star in our sky is, that's fine. See, so it just mixes up the tenses and the students have to fix them. So that's the generators. That's the four level one generators, all based on content, all knowledge rich and all ready to use today. Okay, any questions about these four generators? Otherwise I'm gonna go on to a liner. And you can uh, put it in the chat. I'll also let you guys unmute yourself. Um, uh, allow. There we go. So you guys should be able to unmute if, if someone wants to unmute and just ask. Yes, I had a question. Um, with these generators, do you have the ability to um, include audio as well? Ah, we did not think about that. Um, so you mean it should read? It should read the text for you. Yes, because not all of my students will be able to read it. Um, so the audio will help um, with that. Okay, yeah, that's something we could we could add. Um, I mean, we you could you could we have this additional generator called. I mean, before I add it, <laughs> we have this additional generator called what you call it. Um, the read aloud. Read aloud. Yeah, so you yeah. could do it. But of course, that's an extra step. And we want to make things streamlined. Um, any other questions? Great idea. How about for second language, sorry, for second language learners? Yes. For example, we will, in Spanish, we don't say black cat, we say cat black. Right. So it would, would it be able to do that? Because I know you're talking about the verb tense and subject, of, subject verb agreement. Hmm. But what about changing that so that English, because that's what I'm saying, that a kid, if it says uh, black cat, he might think, you know, think that it's wrong. And I you're at a school? This is, is this for like dual language or for like um, language yeah, learning? This will be for elementary, but for second language learners, when they read in Spanish, they read the, the adjective and the noun do not correlate. Like they, you have to flip them in Spanish and English. Mm, okay. Um, I haven't, so I haven't would, tried it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, so the way it's, the way I saw the, the way it was done with your verb subject, verb agreements. Yes which is fine, right? But I'm just saying for Spanish speakers, we don't, in Spanish, we would say gato negro. We would not say black cat. We have to flip the black with the cat. We basically would read it in Spanish as cat black instead of right. black cat. Right, I see, I see. Okay, so I think the summer, I haven't tried the summarization in Spanish. It may work in Spanish. Uh, I think the parts of speech right now is only English. Um, that's not to say that I couldn't find the parts of speech model that works with Spanish. Um, so that would be good, good to look into. Um, we would just need to get a, a parts of speech model that works with Spanish. Um, Any other questions, comments? Yeah, I had a question from much earlier. Um, I was oh. watching Julius go really quickly yes. and I wasn't <laughs> sure if he was um, selecting a whole stack of cards at once to copy, if there was a special button that he was using there. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah, when you press select one time, that card gets selected. But you'll notice when he presses select a second time, all of the cards in the stack and connected to that card become selected. Thank you. I thought he was doing some sort of trick, but it was so fast I didn't catch it. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Well, you go. Anyone else? Okay. Okay, wonderful. In the last 10 minutes, I'm going to show you guys not only how to make all these questions, but how to grade all of these questions quickly. So we're gonna go on to the thing called new ELA aligner. And this is student work, actual student work from our summer program, S3. These are fourth and fifth grade students uh, responses. So here we had one of these correct the run on sentence questions by adding correct capitalization and punctuation. Um, and this was about, you know, chicken eggs. A chicken egg contains multiple parts, period. The eggshell is hard, which protects the chick period, close to the shell. Anyway, if you click on this in mass grader, well, the first thing you'll notice is that any question you have, you can attach a key now. So I'm just, let me just do this from scratch. Let's say I have a question, instructions, and I bring down the teacher control panel and I have the sentence to modify like this, 
in the past, this is all we have, right? We have instructions and then we have something that you want to modify and fix. But now you can add one more thing, very important. You can add a key with the correct answer. And the way you add a key is by pressing plus, this plus button here to add a new card. And then you type in the correct sentence. And then you click this thing that says make card key. I know I'm going through this very fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it one more time, okay? Question instructions. Go up here, you bring down the teacher control panel by pressing that button. You type in the incorrect sentence here, you press save. And then if you wanna add the key, you press the plus button underneath the instructions card. You click enter text, and then you type in the correct key sentence here. And you click make card key to make this key. So anytime you see this pattern, you know that the original prompt here and the stack of student work is gonna be here, but you're gonna see below the sort of correct answer. And I'm gonna remove all of this now. Select, 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 delete. So if I click on mass grader here, what I see is all of this student work. And if you'd asked me to grade this stuff last summer, well, actually that's what we did last summer. We went through every single student response looking to make sure all the periods were in the right place and giving them a four, three, two, one, or zero. And you guys must have done this sort of thing for your kids, right? It takes a long time. But now because Skies knows what the correct answer is, you can just click this button that says align text and it will actually show you all of the different responses and like what mistakes they've made. At the top are the responses that are correct and at the bottom are the ones that are really incorrect. And then it just sort of goes in order. One more thing you might notice is some of these are just wrong because of the commas. And I don't really care about commas right now. So I'm going to ignore commas. So now we can say, OK, all of these responses are correct. I'm going to go click on these and give these all a four. These, they only made like one mistake. So I'm going to be generous and give them a three. And all of these made like two mistakes or three mistakes or four mistakes. So I'm going to give these guys all twos. So just like that, we've created this entire stack of like 18 cards in like one minute, much faster. Here's the last thing though. If I exit mass grader, you see that all of the students have like grades now, four, three, two, whatever but the students don't actually know what they've done wrong. Like I got a two, I don't know why I got a two. I can't fix this, I'm just a two. I'm literally a two, <laughs> I can't fix it, I can't change. Um, but we have one more thing about this ELA aligner that makes it nice for students, which is that you see these little gray pluses? If I click the plus, it sends feedback to the students. And in fact, if I click this button that says add feedback, it sends feedback to all the students. And I'm gonna go back to the lesson and I'm gonna spread this out. And what you will see is that everyone who got it correct gets a great work. Everyone who got it wrong gets a little detailed thing showing them exactly what mistakes they need to fix so they can go ahead and fix them and then resubmit their work. This is a little faster than doing it, you know, with annotation or by hand or by any other method you can think of. So again, it makes grading these exercises really fast. Okay. Any questions about that? I've got two more things to show you. Okay. Let's go to uh, the next thing. So here we have a more complicated Hochman kind of activity, which is combining sentences. We want to use two conjunctions, a subordinating one at the beginning and a coordinating one in the middle. So the answer should be something like, while Robert E. Lee was the son of a hero, comma, his family did not have any money, 
comma, so he, he did not have any other choice but to join the military academy. Oh my gosh, this would be a huge pain to grade. I'm gonna click grades. I'm gonna click a line and then let's get started. The first thing you might notice is that the first two answers are pretty much correct. Then you might see some other answers here. And now we actually have to think a little bit. Even though he was the son, their family didn't have money. Since he was the son, their family didn't have money. That doesn't make sense. Since doesn't work. So, you know, this guy gets a two. You know, here they have a pronoun issue, also a two. But you see, while, while works. While he was the son, that's okay. So I'm actually gonna click this red link here that says while, and it causes it to ignore it. It says, okay, that's actually correct. And although also works, although and even though are kind of the same thing. So I'm gonna click on the although, and now these are gonna be considered to be correct as well. So all the senses we leave red, um, but all the whiles and all those we click on because those are actually correct. So we tell it to ignore it. And then we can go ahead and give all of those fours. And when you, uh, will you, when you post it, Jay, uh, Julius, will you show how the, you included the feedback again? Yes, of course. Um, one more thing is if you're like, oh, actually while is wrong, you can click, uh, click it again and it will change back to red. But I'm gonna keep it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on this button that says add feedback all. And again, all these students now get feedback showing them exactly what they need to fix. So let's uh, let's spread it out here. Yep, so you can see all of the different things they need to fix here. I think we have a question from Alex. Yes, Alex, Mr. Serafin. Yes, uh, two questions real quick. Um, you, you know when you give the feedback, um, the good, the great work, is yes. that only given to the ones who get fours or the ones that get threes as well? Uh, it's, it's all the ones who don't have any mistakes. Oh, so if it's perfect. Oh, so it doesn't matter yeah. the grade. Yeah, it doesn't matter the grade. You don't have to uh, assign a grade, actually. And then second question, um, let's say you have some type of like, you know, class phrase that you tend to use, you know, awesome sauce, or right. you know, you know, pretty, 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 pretty good. <laughs> Can you customize the great work? No, oh. not yet. I just, I just, I hard coded that into the program. Oh, but okay. that, or, maybe, that would be... or maybe there was like, maybe like a, like a selection of maybe like, you know, three or four different. <laughs> okay. Different, yeah. uh, you know, little, little catchphrases. Right, you know, right. You know, so savage. Well, I think savage. that's the popular one nowadays. <laughs> okay. You know, something. Okay, okay thank you, Gilas. Yeah, yeah. I'm not up to like all the, the current, like what's cool, but I can, uh, I can make it, I can offer a selection. Hey, these kids get, keep you young. I know. I said all that in a, in a bag of potato chips, and they're like, you're eating potato chips? <laughs> it's like, what's that about? I'm like, oh, okay. okay. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay. So one last thing I'm going to show is uh, what happens if you have multiple correct responses. So we can ignore certain mistakes, but let me show you a case where there can be more than one correct response. So this one is about um, Cesar Chavez. Cesar Chavez learned about nonviolent protests and how to organize unions. Um, so that I think it should be something like after Chavez learned about nonviolent protests and organized unions, comma, he was able to put these ideas into practice. So I'm going to align text. And you see, indeed, we have a few afters that are correct. So I can give these a four. But here's the thing. If we start scrolling down, we start to see a bunch of kids having another thing that's actually correct. Chavez learned about nonviolent protests and how to organize unions, comma, so he was able to put these ideas. And that's also quite valid. So what I'm gonna do is, there's an option here called make key, and I can make this a valid key response as well. So you can have multiple keys. So these are all the afters, and these are all the Chavez, Chavez, Chavez. And so we can mark all of these as correct if we wanted to. So it's very flexible. You can have multiple correct answers and then it just associates each response with the one that's closest to, the, to all the different keys that are floating around out there. Okay, so that's an advanced like thing if you have multiple correct possible responses. 
Okay. Any more questions about the ELA aligner? Otherwise, I'm going to take two minutes to conclude and then we'll move to our breakout rooms. Okay. So the conclusion? Oh, sorry. Um, oh, sorry. Yes. Just, uh, like that, just in case, it, anybody have a hand up or trying to unmute yourself? Yeah. Okay. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Julie. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Um, oh, I'm seeing some chats about teaching. To, uh, I won't get into educational politics, but yeah, yeah, like just yeah, this stuff's important. I know, and we 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 we're not about the test. We're about achievement defined broadly, not just the test. But yeah, this is uh, yeah, this is important to you guys, and so it's important to us as well. Yeah, I'm in agreement with what you're doing. I just I just had to break bring up the fact that that is what got us in this predicament that we're in. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, yeah. If you're only testing a few things, you might not build up all the skills you need to do things other than the test, which paradoxically makes you do worse on the test. Um, but yeah, that's absolutely. Okay. Yep, yep. Okay. Um, anyway, in conclusion, <laughs> these things were already easy in skies like years ago, right? Visual text, students dictating, having a process, copying and pasting things, all sorts of multimedia. It was already a very writing friendly platform. But we don't just want to be writing friendly. We want to be writing like awesome. We want to be able to improve writing to like the next level. And I think at Skies, we're more and more convinced that this requires explicit instruction. And not just at the paragraph level, but at the sentence level, at the mechanics level. And it can't just be like random sentences you grab off the internet or off some sentence bank or off some database. It has to be related to what they're studying like right then and there. That's the only way they're going to be able to build those critical thinking skills, reading comprehension and everything tied together. Like it needs to be all tied. And so we help uh, by making it possible to take any content, any nonfiction content you have and automatically generate these level one sentence activities. And also by making it super easy to grade the results that your students give back to you. So we hope that you use these features and that your students become new, more awesome writers uh, in the days, weeks, months, years to come. Um, I also want to advertise Hochman. We took her course. It was wonderful. Uh, it's online. Um, it's $1,000. I know hopefully like LEUSD can pay for it or something like that. Um, and we'll also go into a lot of detail about how to make the higher level level two and level three activities as well. Okay, that's everything for me.